friend. But I think I'm the only one that's doing it, so I should repeat it. This is a new example of it. You can see this newspaper didn't want to report Israel as part of the motive, and they didn't On February 26, 1993, at 12.19 p.m., a truck bomb detonated in the underground parking garage of Tower 1 of the World Trade Center complex. The bomb was a urea nitrate device enhanced with hydrogen gas. The bomb ripped a 30-meter wide hole through four sublevels of concrete and 1,042 injured as smoke poured into the towers. Investigators found the axle of the rider truck that was used in the bombing trace the vehicle identification number to the man who rented the truck, Mohammed Salome. Eventually, blame for the bombing came to rest with Ramzi Youssef, whose uncle, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, or KSM, confessed to masterminding the 9-11 attacks from A to Z in a highly dubious, heavily redacted confession extracted after four years of torture in a secret CIA prison and after having his sons abducted and used as bargaining chips in the interrogation process. Media fascination with the case was quick to focus on Ramzi Youssef. But during the investigation, some startling information came to light. Last winter, the FBI was praised for its speed in cracking the case of the World Trade Center bombing and bringing four suspects to trial. Now, there is some evidence that the FBI may have known of the plot in advance through an informant and might, might even have stopped the bombing that killed six people. Correspondent Jacqueline Adams has the story. FBI agents might have been able to prevent last February's deadly explosion at New York's World Trade Center. They discussed secretly substituting harmless powder for the explosives, but they didn't, according to the FBI's own informant, Imad Salem. Unbeknownst to the FBI at the time, Salem recorded many of his conversations with his handlers. I'm holding 903 pages of draft transcripts. William Kunzler represents Sheikh Omar Abdel Rahman and several others charged with conspiring to blow up a series of New York City landmarks four months after the World Trade Center bombing. That case has not yet gone to trial. Kunzler confirmed newspaper reports of the Salem transcripts. In one, Salem complains to an FBI agent, since the bomb went off, I feel terrible, I feel bad, I feel here is people who don't listen. The agent replies, hey, I mean, it wasn't like you didn't try and I didn't try. You can't force people to do the right thing. There is material in here to show gross governmental misconduct. Today, attorneys for the defendants in the ongoing World Trade Center bombing case formally asked for the transcripts of Salem's tapes. Quite frankly, beyond me, why uh, now, the fourth week into the trial, uh, we still don't have these materials. Prosecutors have refused to comment publicly, but legal experts say the defense may have no right to those transcripts. It's not a defense to a crime to say, if only the government had stopped me, I wouldn't have done it. So this isn't... As reported by CBS News, the New York Times, and other respected news organizations at the time, Imad Salem was an ex-Egyptian army officer turned FBI informant and was essential in helping convict others in the bombing. However, it was Salem's contention that he had agreed to supply fake explosives to the bombers and he was overruled by his FBI handlers. Salem, perhaps experienced in the machinations of black ops, had the sense to tape some of his telephone conversations with his FBI handlers, including FBI Special Agent John Antichev. This is a recording of one of Salem's conversations with Antichev. Everything was submitted with a receipt, yeah. and now it's questionable. It's not questionable, it's like a little out of ordinary. Okay. You know, that's all right. I don't think it was, uh, if that's what you think, that is fine, but I don't think that because we was start already building the bomb, which is went off in the World Trade Center. I, it was built by uh, 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 supervising, uh, supervision from the Bureau and the DA, and we was all informed about it, and we know that the bomb start to be built. By who? By your confidential informant. 
What a wonderful, great case. Wow. And then he put his head in the sand as think that because we was start already building the bomb which is went off in the World Trade Center. I, it was built by uh, 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 supervising uh, supervision from the Bureau and the DA and we was all informed about it and we know that the bomb start to be built. By who? By your confidential informant. What a wonderful great case. Wow. And then he put his head in the Ad Salem is a former Egyptian army officer and the government's star witness against Egyptian cleric Dr. Omar Abd Rahman, who the FBI says was the ringleader in the bombing plot. Salem was paid an estimated $1.5 million to infiltrate and inform on Rahman and his followers. He was recruited shortly after the 1991 assassination of right-wing rabbi Meir Kahana. As an associate of Rahman, Salem traveled in the cleric's inner circle, where he surreptitiously recorded conversations with Rahman. But unknown to his FBI handlers at the time, Salem also recorded his dealings with the government. A newspaper article revealed the existence of the tapes, and the Reuters news agency received written transcripts. A copy of one of the most revealing conversations between Ahmad Salem and an FBI agent named John was recently acquired by WBAI. In that conversation, Salem demands more money from the FBI, outlining his contributions to the agency, including a cryptic statement by Salem to the FBI. Salem says, we know the bombs start to be built by your confidential informant. According to a source close to the case, Ahmad Salem checked into a Manhattan hospital three hours after the blast, complaining of a severe ringing in his ears. A hospital spokesperson refuses to confirm or deny the report.